and I kept driving and I went, oh no, something inside of my truck is burning. All right, welcome everybody. I just want to say hi and thank you to Grant Stanley for joining us. Hi, Grant. Hi. <laughs> you have had to use an H2R performance extinguisher. What happened? What caused the fire? Yeah, I was uh, going ice climbing and I was driving up this mountain road and it was kind of uh, bumpy. And um, I had always I actually had bought my H3R uh, uh, extinguisher because I had this fear that I would someday be going over washboard and it would cause something to short out in my electrical system and I'd have a fire. And so I was driving along and all of a sudden um, I started smelling something and I went, hmm, something's burning. And I kept driving and I went, oh no, something inside of my truck is burning. And so uh, I had my extinguisher mounted underneath my driver's seat, uh, which was just like the perfect location for it. Uh, reached down, grabbed it, uh, got under the hood, uh, put the fire out. It had burned through a two gauge uh, wire, completely gone. Uh, and I actually have like little burn marks throughout all my wire harnesses. So I'm taking it back to uh, the dealer who installed all the electrical, uh, and they're going to get to, uh, have the fun task of replacing all those wire looms. So do you know what caused it or you need them to take a look and tell you? No, I know what caused it. I, um, had batteries and battery trays instead of battery boxes and the dealer had placed the, um, so you ground out the negative, but then they had placed the positive of one of the other batteries on the other side of the vehicle. So my aux battery, the positive side was facing the frame and then both batteries were grounded out to the frame. And so when it shifted, it arced over into the frame and uh, I think it was like 1500 cold cranking amps went through my vehicle. I burned like the headliner. Yeah, it was like my lungs hurt for like the next day just from like the fumes. That sounds intense. What kind of vehicle were you driving? I have a, uh, a, a pretty modded out forerunner. Uh, I actually built a bunk in the back so that I can sleep in it. I'm putting an SPAR heater in so that I can actually have like a, like a heater and a thermostat. I kind of knew with all those modifications uh, that having a fire extinguisher, I've got one under my seat and then I also have one in the back in, in my bunk. And I knew with all those modifications, like nothing had been, you know, it hadn't gone through the testing that a normal engineer would put a put something through and so i kind of had an inkling that a, a fire was was a likely possibility yeah that's smart i mean we have a lot of customers in the same situation where they've done a lot of modifications and this is exactly the setup we recommend especially for people who are doing a lot of overlanding um is the how guard up front within reach if you have an engine yep. fire and then the max out like in back. So when you're out camping, when you're out doing other stuff, if someone else's vehicle catches fire and you have a backup, because if you're out and about on your own, <laughs> you have, it's, that's all you have. <laughs> it was one of those things where I was really glad that I had uh, the Howl guard under my seat and two and a half pounds uh, was enough to get the, the initial fire out. But then I, I also traveled with a toolkit um, because it started to light back up because it was an electrical fire. And so then I like undid all the, you know, undid all the batteries, made sure it was like, but you're still just kind of like, if this thing lights back up, I'm out of my hall, my hall guard. Like, I'm just going to have to like use, um, use the max out and just get it out. How quickly did it put it out? Um, when you, you, when you discharged it, did you completely empty it? Yeah, I completely emptied it. Every time I, I wash my car, I wash the mats and I pull the, I pull the fire extinguisher and just kind of practice because I had a buddy die uh, ice climbing uh, in 2020 at the beginning, pre-COVID. Pre-COVID 2020, he died ice climbing from a heart attack. It's amazing how blank your mind goes when something like that goes wrong. I actually lost the insole of my mountaineering boot during that and I lost a glove. Like I just lost a lot of things because it was just like, He's up there, uh, like, you know, he's up on the top of this, this uh, pitch and he's dying. Like you're, you just short out. And so I knew like you had to practice quite a bit in order to like have it be really fluid, but it was, it was really fast, really simple, came naturally to like pull the hood, but then like not open it up all the way. Like, and then with the electrical fire, the majority of the fire was behind the firewall in the engine bay, but it's burning throughout the whole vehicle. So having that max out to be like, okay, I got the engine fire out, I get the primary fire out, but it's still smoldering throughout the, like, 
the headliner and stuff. Uh, oh, the little wire limbs. Like it was really nice having both. Very sorry about your friend. That's uh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes when I tell the stories, it feels like I just uh, am prone to accidents, but uh, I actually, I'm just out a lot. I try to try to go on an adventure like once every two weeks. The more time you spend outside in the wilderness, like the more, I don't know, the more situations you're going to get yourself into and making sure that you've got the kit to rescue yourself. And actually what made me buy uh, the hall guard was I was ice climbing. Ice climbing maybe is the theme. Maybe you shouldn't go ice climbing. That's maybe the theme because that's what happened. That's when the fire started. I was going ice climbing. My friend died ice climbing. Um, but we were uh, camping, going ice climbing, and somebody broke into our car, broke out the driver's side window and the sunroof, uh, which I don't know why they make forerunners with sunroofs, but, and there was this big blizzard that was coming. And so we were trying to outrun this blizzard. Uh, we still got hit by all the winds. So we've got vinyl in, in the windows and I'm driving, like holding the vinyl in, uh, trying to make sure it doesn't rip out. And we're going over this mountain pass in the Bighorns. And we just, I mean, we're just getting hit by huge wind gusts. And I like realized at that moment, like if this vinyl blows out, like the, the, the frame of the vehicle's wet, we're not gonna be able to get the vinyl back in. We could die. The forerunner could be totaled. We saw the cop go down to shut the pass down as we were coming out. It took 23 hours to, to drive home because you can only go so fast. And I realized in that moment that if I'm overlanding and doing these big trips, I need to make sure to preserve my vehicle because that's my my shelter and all my gear is in there. So even if I have a tent and the vehicle goes up, like I'm losing my tent. And so that was, that was kind of what made me pull the trigger was realizing if I'm relying on my vehicle for shelter and I'm going to these remote places that I need to do everything I can to, to preserve that vehicle. That's so. very smart. That's very smart. What a story. Oh my gosh. So I want to also ask you about the bracket. Which ones did you use and how was it to get it out? I used the, uh, the underseat mounting bracket. Actually on the underseat mount and the, the back, I use the, um, the plastic one with the, the polar release tab. It's, it's great. It doesn't rattle. Again, having been in some, some situations, I'm shaken. I'm going to lose my dexterity. Like I don't want to have to think. So having that big old tab uh, is, is really helpful. I actually, um, I've got the Rago fabrication Molly panels, which is what it's, uh, mounted on in my bunk. And then having the big old pull to release tab is, is really, really helpful because I, I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to mess with it. So I really, I really do like the underseat mount. We really appreciate you sharing because overlanding is just exploding, you know? So we have a lot of customers who are experienced, but also just getting into it. And sometimes I think especially for new people, it's like, what should I get? What do, what do I need to have? And I think sometimes people get very excited about all the, the bells and whistles and forget about safety gear. Yep. And it's a really rough lesson to learn when you're out there and you don't have something. So um, we're just hoping that you know, this is going to be great for helping to kind of educate people. So yeah. And I would, I would really recommend that under the driver's seat mount, like don't put it on the passenger side, your passenger side fills up with stuff. It's seconds, right? Like it's also clean your engine. I, I'm in the trucking industry and a lot of drivers will clean their engines and not having grease in my engine was really helpful to stay in electrical fire for it not to hop over into a grease fire. And so I get, I get a, a full engine wash every kind of 15,000 miles makes maintenance a lot easier and it saves my vehicle. Do you have any last bits of advice for people in terms of, you know, being prepared or what to do in a fire? <laughs> No, but if you've never had a chance to drive across Wyoming, the night before the vehicle fire, I was, uh, I drove down this, this stretch of interstate. I didn't see a single person for an hour. Uh, and they have these big billboards that say like animals may enter the interstate going 55 miles an hour and you're driving and you're just like, okay, like, I hope I don't hit one of these things. Uh, I've seen like moose, uh, running along the interstate in Wyoming. You don't have to off-road to Overland. Uh, you just have to go to Wyoming. Okay. Well, that's some great advice to anybody who wants to, to get away. If you're tired of seeing people, go to Wyoming. <laughs> Wyoming. There are no people. All right. Well, thanks again, Grant. Really appreciate you taking yep. the time. Thank you so much. All right.